Fear not, America. This is Pastor Elia Cook here at Jackson Street Baptist Church to remind you that God loves you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. He is right there with you, and he will carry you through whatever it is you're going through. Just need to remind you of that. Dear Christian, I'm trying to share with you the word of the Lord, the scripture, so that you can grow as a Christian. You don't have to remain simplistic in your mindset. You can be transformed by the renewing of your hearts and minds by turning to God's word daily. And we do that in these videos every morning at Jackson Street Baptist Church Facebook uh, page. You'll you'll find at 7 a.m. every morning we post a Bible study for you. And it's, it's all designed to help grow you and mature you in your faith. Today we find ourselves in Revelation chapter 19. Now, if you're with us for the first time, there's been over a month of Bible study in previous chapters, and I encourage you to go back and take a look at them. It's a good study in end times, what's going to be happening at the very end, uh, the last, especially the last seven years called the tribulation. During that seven-year period, various things that are going to be happening. By the time we're in chapter 19, such as we are today, um, those seven years have passed. And Babylon and and all who are warring against God have been punished and annihilated. They, they've, they've died. The Lord has taken them. And today we'll take a look at what happens one of the first things that happens after this this uh, cleansing of the earth heavenly father we ask your blessing upon us as we read together your word and try to understand it and apply it to our lives may you give us wisdom may you give us uh, the mindset of christ so that when we go forth from this place we would be better prepared to answer questions, and to live a righteous life. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation 19, starting in verse 1. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven, shouting, Hosanna! Excuse me. (laughs) Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen! Hallelujah! Uh, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants, all who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our God, our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Okay, what do we have in this section of chapter 19 is heaven is celebrating God's tremendous victory over his enemies. Not his children, his enemies. Those who have refused his salvation, those who have hardened their hearts, those who know what God would be willing to do to forgive them and allow them entrance into heaven, those who rejected that salvation and chose to follow the beast, to follow Satan himself, 
know that they're going to be condemned for all eternity into the pit where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, these are the ones who are destroyed utterly, called the great Babylon, uh, called, uh, you know, the unsaved. And those who are on God's side are believing that God has done right by doing this because he's balanced the scales. Justice has won out. God is a God of justice. Yes, he's a God of love and mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. Of course he is. But alongside of that, one of his qualities as God, he has to be fair. He has to be just. He has to be holy. He can't wink his eye at sin. He can't just allow an unrepentant sinner into heaven. That wouldn't be fair to all those who did repent and came to faith in Christ. So, he's got to deal with the unrepentant sinner. He's got to deal with sin. He's holy. He cannot stand sin for all eternity in his presence. He's been forbearing with mankind and this world long enough. And he will put an end to sin. And he starts here on this day. And those in heaven celebrate this, that God has done a good thing in destroying his enemies. And not just the saints and the martyrs, but the elders, uh, the 24 elders and the four living beasts, everybody's involved. The angels in glory were all singing hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Uh, and they're rejoicing. Uh, over his great victory at Armageddon and over the beast and over humanity that warred against him, that dared to raise a fist to God. And uh, at the end here, it starts to talk about the wedding feast. Now, uh, the church, those who trust and believe in Jesus, they're considered uh, Christians, and, and Christians are the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And we have the opportunity uh, to, at this point, we're going to be made perfect and complete, not lacking in anything. And there's going to be a wedding in heaven. And he starts talking about how the bride has prepared herself. Well, it's actually God who has prepared us. Um, but he's given us fine clothes of white linen to wear, and we have put it on. And that talks about a righteousness. That's not our own righteousness, not our own acts and deeds here on earth, because you could put them all in one big pile, and it's still a dung heap. It's still, uh, you know, refuge. It's, it's, it's not anything you want to take into glory with you. Your good works are, are, are worthless. It's Christ and his righteousness that we robe ourselves with, that we put on. And uh, he says, blessed are those are who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And uh, so, so not only are we going to be married to Christ, not only are we the bride, but we're also invitees to this wedding supper. Okay, um, You know, we're not literally marrying, here's my wedding uh, ring. We're not literally marrying Christ, um, but the church is his bride in the sense that he loves us so much that he gave his, his life for us, just as any good husband would give up his life for his wife and his children. So God has given up his life for us because he loves us that much. And so we are, we are his. We are his children. We are his bride. He has great delight in us. He loves us so much. And he invites us uh, into that fellowship, into that relationship with him that is very, very intimate, that is uh, uh, something that is going to provide for you a tremendous a blessing your whole life long if you're trusting in Jesus. Because you can have joy in the midst of tribulation. You can have peace that passes understanding in the midst of, of turmoil and strife. You can be at peace. Uh, you can know forgiveness and be able to forgive. You can love, and not just with the kind of love that the world has, but with the highest level of love, God's love. You can learn these things and have these things in abundance. And the fruit of the Spirit can produce in you all sorts of great and glorious things. 
if you're growing and being stretched as a Christian, these things can be yours. But if you refuse fellowship, if you refuse the word of God, if you don't turn to him in prayer, if you're not in fellowship with your fellow Christians, not working on your spiritual gifts, developing them and honing them down and using them in ministry and having a witness and being faithful to share your story and the gospel, the good news to those who may not know, you're a little baby Christian and you're not going to know these things that I've just talked about. But you may still be a Christian. You don't have to be immature and a baby. You can grow in Christ. And so be that mature believer. Be prepared and ready for this marriage feast. Um, you don't want to be sitting at the children's table. You know? the kids table you don't want to be sitting there you'll look pretty silly being a full-grown adult sitting at the children's table grow up Christian get yourself back to church you know we're here and I do this for you I'm not doing it for me I'm not even doing it for Jackson Street Baptist Church I'm doing it this for you so that you can understand the ramifications of how you're choosing to live your life. And I'm trying to encourage you, get back into fellowship. So many Christians are out of fellowship. Yes, because of quarantining, but long before the COVID crisis hit, people were, were abandoning church and fellowship and were no longer uh, coming uh, to places of worship. And I have to tell you now, you got to get yourself back. You've got to get your children back into church. You've got to bring your spouses, your family, your friends, your co-workers into church where they can be encouraged, where they can learn about faith and have questions answered and come to faith in Christ and be spared many, many heartaches. But it's up to you whether you will hear these words and re-engage or whether you will continue to drift perhaps further and further away from Christ and continue to be your little baby spoiled self or where you ready to grow I pray you're ready to grow I pray that you're willing to set aside differences and to put past experiences behind you to forgive and move on to love well, uh, today I'd like to pray uh, for the area churches here in Scranton especially, but around the world. There are some who ha were struggling, ready to close their doors before COVID hit, and some of them are closing their doors. Others are ever so close to losing the battle and ready to give up themselves. Uh, praying that this COVID crisis will end and that the churches will thrive once again, that people will get back into fellowship and, and find themselves back in, in the churches, worshiping God, getting involved in Sunday school classes, Bible studies, getting involved in relationships. And yes, they're not always wonderful. Sometimes some of those relationships are tan cantankerous or difficult, and they can be um, filled with strife. But most of those relationships, if you've had any experience in the church, you know that 90% of the relationships at church are wonderful, dear people. And for some reason, we let one or two bad experiences taint the whole thing. Don't let that happen anymore. Um, grow a thicker skin. Confront. Uh, go to leadership and say, this person is being unkind, judgmental, whatever, and let them deal with it. There, there are ways to deal. And I know no one likes to make waves and you'd rather just disappear. You're not helping your brothers and sisters. You're not helping the church. So get engaged. Come back to church. Jackson Street Baptist Church is open at 10. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon uh, churches across our land, especially here in Scranton. Father, there have been uh, some churches, Father, that have recently closed their doors. Others, Father, are struggling and considering doing the same. Lord, we are concerned for the witness that goes on in our community and around the world. Father, we want your church to 
to thrive. We want it to, to do well. We want to see it just like Acts chapter 2, growing daily, um, seeing new people one to Christ and more and more people praising and worshiping your holy name. We see the scene in heaven and we see so many gathered to worship you um, in glory. And yet here in this life, Father, we're seeing, well, a generation that's growing up atheists, people that are not being brought to church and will perhaps themselves uh, be raising atheist children and uh, a generation lost and perhaps a, a nation lost. Once the, a bastion of Christian faith, Father, it's, it's quickly becoming a post-Christian society here in America, here in Scranton. Father, we pray that that day would never come, that there would be a revival, a renewing, a refreshing, that people would make their, their uh, faith known and that they would make a commitment to get back into fellowship. If not to a church, Father, then to a Bible study and relationships with other Christians that would help them to grow. Please, Father, drive us uh, back to yourself. Thank you again for the way that you're fighting for us and, and for all the wisdom and knowledge that you've given to men and women who've worked on this vaccine. Father, we pray for the distribution of it and, and uh, an end to this pandemic, Father. And we're doing fairly well compared to other countries. It's going to be still a worldwide battle for a while. Father, please um, provide for your church. Uh, may we lead the communities back to regular, normal life. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm a Baptist. I love to pray. I'm a pastor. I love to pray. If you've got a prayer request, let us know down below. You have a need for a Bible. You have questions. That's what those spaces are for. And you can just make a comment. You know, the more comments that are down there, the more likes, the more shares we get, the more Facebook shares this video uh, across their, their uh, uh, web, okay? The relationships that you have with other people will see that you're watching it and have the opportunity to, to watch it for themselves. So I encourage you to, to like, share, and comment down below. I'd, I'd appreciate that. We're building a network and it's it's across the country now. And that's why we changed from Fear Not Scranton to, to Fear Not America. And it, it's actually global. There are people watching on a regular basis around the world. This, this little video blog that I put up on Facebook. And I'm still believing that there are going to be some people in the tribulation after I've been raptured out of this place. Um, there are people who are going to find this. Uh, video and uh, this series in particular will be of interest to them they'll be watching and perhaps many will come to know Christ uh, during that seven-year tribulation well um, all because you God's faithful people have supported this ministry and uh, get back to church people that's the big thrust that I'm going to be harping on for the next three months it's so important um, Get your shot, uh, feel safe, re-engage, not just at church, but in community and back into life, engaging other people, your family and friends that you haven't seen for a long time. Please, oh, my heart breaks uh, when I see uh, so many people who have been isolated for so long and children who forgot how to interact with their friends. Oh my goodness. Um, the Lord's delivering us, and we need to take advantage of it. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Remember, fear not, America.